just as with the HBR reaction, we can have a Markovnikov addition or anti-Markovnikov addition, and we can choose the conditions to give us either one. The same is true with hydration. When we're making alcohols, we can use the previous recipe with the sulfuric acid to give the Markovnikov addition. Well, on this slide, we see we can do just the opposite. And here, the ingredients are much different. No sulfuric acid. B2H6 is called diborane. Uh, it's basically a double molecule of BH3, which is just called borane. It's kind of like the boron, uh, boron version of methane, but uh, each boron only has three hydrogens attached to it. Anyway, uh, we're not going to go into the mechanism for this reaction, although your chapter does talk about that. Uh, I just want you to know the outcome of using these ingredients on an alkene the fact that this does create an alcohol and it does create the anti-Markovnikov alcohol. Uh, it's coincidental that we're using a peroxide here, hydrogen peroxide, and in the other reaction that gave us anti-Markovnikov, the HBr, that also involved peroxides in that particular orientation. So that's a, a, a nice correlation to keep these straight because when you use peroxides with HBr and we're using hydrogen peroxide here, in both instances, we get that anti-Markovnikov addition. So we have to know how Markovnikov's rule works and keep that straight so that we can predict uh, when we have the opposite effect. Um, the one and the two indicate that this is really two sequential reactions. The borane molecules are added, and then in a subsequent step, we get the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, this THF here that you see on the second reaction, that is tetrahydrofuran. That's the abbreviation of a common solvent. It's a special kind of ether that dissolves borane, and uh, it's usually mentioned as the solvent in, in reactions like these. But in both cases, we have alkenes that could conceivably have two hydration products, but uh, again, we've got control over whether we get the Markovnikov reaction with the sulfuric acid or whether we use these boron compounds to get that anti-Markovnikov uh, addition. So it's nice to have that, that selectivity about it. Well, one more type of reaction we're going to see is when we just ha have two identical halogens adding across a double bond. There's no Markovnikov rule to worry about here because you either have two identical bromines or two identical chlorines adding onto the alkene. And so uh, we just make sure we know to, to put both of those new halogens in place and they go uh, on the carbons that previously shared the double bond. So this is a lot like the hy uh, hydrogenation reaction where we have H2 as the reactant. Um, we simply add identical atoms on either end of that double bond. So we don't have to worry about uh, Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov addition. As it says here at the top, chlorine and bromine are commonly used. Just as HF uh, was not a good choice for adding uh, hydrogen fluoride across a double bond because it reacts too slowly, uh, the problem with F2 is that it reacts too quickly, uh, violently, explosively reactive, reactive. and so uh, fluorine is yet not normally used um, in reactions like this. But chlorine and bromine are the most common halogens and they both work very well, um, giving the corresponding dibromo or dichloro product um, in any good fashion. There is one more aspect of adding Cl2 or Br2 across a double bond uh, for this second reaction here. When we do that on a ring, um, there's a special outcome, and then the next slide will talk about that.